Hello FACT staff. This tutorial will be on how to correctly set up the client module in Percentive. I'll walk you through the steps to make sure that all the information is correct in the client module which will help reduce billing errors and problems later on that will result from incomplete information. So the first thing to see, this is the client tab of the client module and you will see some things here, some things of note. The intake date is actually the date that admin enter the client demographic information within Percentive. And what they will do is they will place the same date under the date of illness. Now here's what you need to know as a therapist. Your first date of contact with the client should be changed to, let's say, this is the first date of service with the client. That should be the new date that goes underneath that so you are able to override that. What you want to do, you see the yellow sections in particular, these are critical pieces of information in order to complete billing. So just review client demographic information just to make sure it's correct. I found that it's very helpful to make sure there's an email address in this because there are times I need to look up the client's email address and I am not at the office so making sure that information in there would be important. Next thing you want to pay attention to is the release of information that the client signs that includes the HIPAA, uh, permission to treat, and insurance release. The date they sign that should be what goes under this date of signature. So for this example let's say 821 it should be put under signed release on file and this should also be signed if you, they're signing that same form it will incorporate both these elements and we'll put 821 there. Next thing you want to just check race and ethnicity. Typically race will be checked by admin. They may not put ethnicity in and make sure you specify that so all that is covered. And with that you have the client tab done. The next Tab, tab over to staff. Just make sure that the assigned staff member on the staff identified as well as the primary will be part of that as well. So just ensuring these there under staff. I'm going to actually move over to the phone tab. Now on the phone tab, what you want to pay attention to is our reminder set up for appointments. As you can see here, there's a mobile phone number, which is great. You do need a mobile phone number in order to send texts automatically. And then you can set reminders. Reminders on the day before appointment and at least a couple hours before the appointment. I would recommend that you follow this one day before appointment and two hours before the appointment unless the client specifies another way or another time period so to speak that they would like. You can see here some of the different options and I will sometimes explain that to clients if they are getting these reminders. You can also do something in session with them. You can hit send a test message and it will send a text right away to the client just to make sure that they are getting them. Just one thing to remember that these texts are going to be coming from a area code 715 number and it is not monitored, so do not have or tell clients not to respond to the text if they have to cancel a session after a reminder. That should go through the main number at fax. The next tab you want to pay attention to is the diagnoses tab. With some clients, you may see some things set up here, including such things as DA pending, it'll say DA pend or wait list. With any of those, we do not want to overwrite anything that is listed under diagnosis. What we want to do instead is inactivate it. So if you click on this little drop down menu, you will see active, move it to inactive, and then put the date that you made it inactive. In this situation, this client was open previously and had diagnoses and notice they've all been inactivated. Under a new episode of care here you want to make sure you're doing the diagnoses, putting a date a year from 
the date of the initial diagnoses, because for children, it's one year. Adults, it's every three years that DAs have to be updated. Then you put outpatient, you'll want to put the staff member, make sure all these are filled out, even if you have multiple diagnoses. So this one we want to be adding, making sure we're consistent with staff members. Oh, just trust me on that. <laughs> Instead of saving or spending the time till that opens up. And then the diagnosis date would be more within the current time frame that we've been keeping. Status is active. Next tab you want to pay attention to will be the program groups tab. Now this is a way, particularly as we move to electronic health records, that we're tracking when clients are open within different programs. And as you know, there are many clients who may be open among multiple programs within the agency. This is a test client, so we're just going to open up this workflow test and I'm going to show you how this works. If you go to this tab, all you're going to do is hit the current initial date of contact with the client. This will actually be blank. And what happens is your initial date of service will be there. When the case closes, it will be your last date of contact with the client will be your stop date. One thing to note, make sure you close this out using this hyperlink. If you just hit save, it will not save that information. So hit close and then it will save that information. And you will uh, see that there. this is not checked and it should not be because that would make the, the program inactive. Next, you want to go under contacts at times we are using this tab to make sure we know our referral sources. Typically, this will be filled in if that information came with a referral. Um, so that is helpful to know. And probably the last tab then you'll be asked to look at will be the miscellaneous tab. In the miscellaneous tab, we're wanting, the only thing we're really wanting to track here is the school tab and the district. So the way we want this written is it'll go 196, which is the district, and we'll put the elementary school this kid attends, Echo Park Elementary, and we'll put the grade, it'll be grade four, and that should be all you need to do on this page. And then make sure you hit save after all this is done, and then you have correctly set up the client module within percent of and that helps tremendously with billing and other pieces of information that we are tracking as part of programs. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.